Titus was Roman emperor from 79 to 81. A member of the Flavian dynasty, Titus succeeded his father Vespasian upon his death, thus becoming the first Roman emperor to come to the throne after his own biological father. Prior to becoming emperor, Titus gained renown as a military commander, serving under his father in Judea during the First Jewish-Roman War. The campaign came to a brief halt with the death of Emperor Nero in 68, launching Vespasian's bid for the imperial power during the Year of the Four Emperors. When Vespasian was declared emperor on 1 July 69, Titus was left in charge of ending the Jewish rebellion. In 70, he besieged and captured Jerusalem, and destroyed the city and the Second Temple. For this achievement Titus was awarded a triumph. The Arch of Titus commemorates his victory to this day. Under the rule of his father, Titus gained notoriety in Rome serving as prefect of the Praetorian Guard, and for carrying on a controversial relationship with the Jewish queen Berenice. Despite concerns over his character, Titus ruled to great acclaim following the death of Vespasian in 79, and was considered a good emperor by Suetonius and other contemporary historians. As emperor, he is best known for completing the Colosseum and for his generosity in relieving the suffering caused by two disasters, the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79 and a fire in Rome in 80. After barely two years in office, Titus died of a fever on 13 September 81. He was deified by the Roman Senate and succeeded by his younger brother Domitian. Early life Titus was born in Rome, probably on 30 December 39 AD. As the eldest son of Titus Flavius Vespasianus, commonly known as Vespasian, and Domitilla the Elder, he had one younger sister, Domitilla the Younger, and one younger brother, also named Titus Flavius Domitianus but commonly referred to as Domitian. Family background Decades of civil war during the 1st century BC had contributed greatly to the demise of the old aristocracy of Rome, which was gradually replaced in prominence by a new provincial nobility during the early part of the 1st century. One such family was the Gens Flavia, which rose from relative obscurity to prominence in just four generations acquiring wealth and status under the emperors of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. Titus's great-grandfather, Titus Flavius Petro, had served as a centurion under Pompey during Caesar's civil war. His military career ended in disgrace when he fled the battlefield at the Battle of Pharsalus in 48 BC. Nevertheless, Petro managed to improve his status by marrying the extremely wealthy Tertulla whose fortune guaranteed the upwards mobility of Petro's son Titus Flavius Sabinus I, Titus's grandfather. Sabinus himself amassed further wealth and possible equestrian status through his services as tax collector in Asia and banker in Helvetia. By marrying Vespasia Pola he allied himself to the more prestigious patrician Gens Vespasia, ensuring the elevation of his sons Titus Flavius Sabinus II and Vespasian to the senatorial rank. The political career of Vespasian included the offices of Quaestor, Edel and Praetor, and culminated with a consulship in 51. The year Domitian was born, as a military commander, he gained early renown by participating in the Roman invasion of Britain in 43. What little is known of Titus's early life has been handed down to us by Suetonius, who records that he was brought up at the imperial court in the company of Britannicus, the son of Emperor Claudius who would be murdered by Nero in 55. The story was even told that Titus was reclining next to Britannicus the night he was murdered and sipped of the poison that was handed to him. Further details on his education are scarce, but it seems he showed early promise in the military arts and was a skilled poet and orator both in Greek and Latin. Adult Life From C. 57 to 59 he was a military tribune in Germania. He also served in Britannia, perhaps arriving c. 
60 with reinforcements needed after the revolt of Boudicca. In c. 63 he returned to Rome and married a Racina Tertulla, daughter of a former prefect of the Praetorian Guard. She died c. 65. Titus then took a new wife of a much more distinguished family, Marcia Fernula. However, Marcia's family was closely linked to the opposition to Nero. Her uncle Barius Aurenus and his daughter Servilia were among those who perished after the failed Pisonian conspiracy of 65. Some modern historians theorize that Titus divorced his wife because of her family's connection to the conspiracy. Titus never remarried. Titus appears to have had multiple daughters, at least one of them by Marcia Fernula. The only one known to have survived to adulthood was Julia Flavia, perhaps Titus's child by Aracena, whose mother was also named Julia. During this period Titus also practiced law and attained the rank of quaestor. Judean campaigns in 66 The Jews of the Judea province revolted against the Roman Empire. Cestius Gallus, the legate of Syria, was defeated at the Battle of Beth Horon and forced to retreat from Jerusalem. The pro-Roman king Agrippa II and his sister Berenice fled the city to Galilee where they later gave themselves up to the Romans. Nero appointed Vespasian to put down the rebellion, who was dispatched to the region at once with the 5th Legion and 10th Legion. He was later joined at Ptolemais by Titus with the 15th Legion. With a strength of 60,000 professional soldiers, the Romans prepared to sweep across Galilee and march on Jerusalem. The history of the war was covered in detail by the Roman Jewish historian Josephus in his work The Wars of the Jews. Josephus served as a commander in the city of Yodfarth when the Roman army invaded Galilee in 67. After an exhausting siege which lasted 47 days, the city fell, with an estimated 40,000 killed and the remaining Jews committing suicide. Surviving a group suicide, Josephus surrendered to Vespasian and became a prisoner. He later wrote that he provided the Romans with intelligence on the ongoing revolt. By 68, the entire coast in the north of Judea were subjugated by the Roman army, with decisive victories won at Tarakia and Gamala, where Titus distinguished himself as a skilled general. Year of the Four Emperors The last and most significant fortified city held by the Jewish resistance was Jerusalem. The campaign came to a sudden halt when news arrived of Nero's death. Almost simultaneously, the Roman Senate had declared Galba, then governor of Hispania, as emperor of Rome. Vespasian decided to await further orders, and sent Titus to greet the new princeps. Before reaching Italy, Titus learnt that Galba had been murdered and replaced by Otho, governor of Lusitania, and that Vitellius and his armies in Germania were preparing to march on the capital, intent on overthrowing Otho. Not wanting to risk being taken hostage by one side or the other, he abandoned the journey to Rome and rejoined his father in Judea. Meanwhile, Otho was defeated in the first battle of Bedriacum and committed suicide. When the news reached the armies in Judea and Egyptus, they took matters into their own hands and declared Vespasian emperor on 1 July 69. Vespasian accepted, and through negotiations by Titus, joined forces with Gaius Licinius Mucianus, governor of Syria. A strong force drawn from the Judean and Syrian legions marched on Rome under the command of Mucianus, while Vespasian travelled to Alexandria leaving Titus in charge to end the Jewish rebellion. By the end of 69, the forces of Vitellius had been beaten, and Vespasian was officially declared emperor by the Senate on 21 December, thus ending the year of the four emperors. Siege of Jerusalem Meanwhile, the Jews had become embroiled in a civil war of their own, splitting the resistance in Jerusalem between several factions. The Sicarii led by Menahim ben Judah cannot hold on for long. The Zealots led by Eleazar ben Simon eventually fall under the command of the Galilean leader John of Gush Halev and the other northern rebel commander. Simon Bar-Jorah manages to gain leadership over the Edomians too. 
Titus besieged Jerusalem. The Roman army was joined by the 12th Legion, which was previously defeated under Cestius Gallus, and from Alexandria Vespasian sent Tiberius Julius Alexander, governor of Egypt, to act as Titus II in command. Titus surrounded the city, with three legions on the western side and one on the Mount of Olives to the east. He put pressure on the food and water supplies of the inhabitants by allowing pilgrims to enter the city to celebrate Passover, and then refusing them egress. Jewish raids continuously harassed the Roman army, one of which nearly resulted in Titus being captured. After attempts by Josephus to negotiate a surrender had failed, the Romans resumed hostilities and quickly breached the first and second walls of the city. To intimidate the resistance, Titus ordered deserters from the Jewish side to be crucified around the city wall. By this time the Jews had been exhausted by famine, and when the weak third wall was breached, bitter street fighting ensued. The Romans finally captured the Antonia fortress and began a frontal assault on the gates of the temple. According to Josephus, Titus had ordered that the temple should not be destroyed, but while the fighting around the gates continued, a soldier hurled a torch inside one of the windows, which quickly set the entire building ablaze. The later Christian chronicler Sulpicius Severus, possibly drawing on a lost portion of Tacitus' histories, claims that Titus favored the destruction of the temple. The temple was completely demolished, after which Titus' as soldiers proclaimed him imperator in honor of the victory. Jerusalem was sacked and much of the population killed or dispersed. Josephus claims that 1,100,000 people were killed during the siege, of which a majority were Jewish. 97,000 were captured and enslaved, including Simon Bar-Jorah and John of Gish. Many fled to areas around the Mediterranean. Titus reportedly refused to accept a wreath of victory, as he claimed that he had not won the victory on his own, but had been the vehicle through which their god had manifested his wrath against his people. The Jewish diaspora at the time of the temple's destruction, according to Josephus, was in Parthia, Babylonia, Arabia, as well as some Jews beyond the Euphrates and in Adiabin. Heir to Vespasian unable to sail to Italy during the winter, Titus celebrated elaborate games at Caesarea Maritima and Veritas, then travelled to Zergma on the Euphrates, where he was presented with a crown by Vologasas I of Parthia. While visiting Antioch he confirmed the traditional rites of the Jews in that city. On his way to Alexandria, he stopped in Memphis to consecrate the sacred bull Apis. According to Suetonius, this caused consternation. The ceremony required Titus to wear a diadem, which the Romans associated with monarchy, and the partisanship of Titus's legions had already led to fears that he might rebel against his father. Titus returned quickly to Rome, hoping, says Suetonius, to allay any suspicions about his conduct. Upon his arrival in Rome in 71, Titus was awarded a triumph. Accompanied by Vespasian and Domitian he rode into the city, enthusiastically saluted by the Roman populace and preceded by a lavish parade containing treasures and captives from the war. Josephus describes a procession with large amounts of gold and silver carried along the route, followed by elaborate reenactments of the war, Jewish prisoners, and finally the treasures taken from the Temple of Jerusalem, including the menorah and the pentathuge. Simon Barjora was executed in the Forum, after which the procession closed with religious sacrifices at the Temple of Jupiter. The triumphal arch of Titus, which stands at one entrance to the Forum, memorializes the victory of Titus. With Vespasian declared emperor, Titus and his brother Domitian received the title of Caesar from the Senate. In addition to sharing tribune mission power with his father, Titus held seven consulships during Vespasian's reign and acted as his secretary, appearing in the Senate on his behalf. More crucially, he was appointed Praetorian Prefect.
ensuring their loyalty to the emperor and further solidifying Vespasian's position as a legitimate ruler. In this capacity he achieved considerable notoriety in Rome for his violent actions, frequently ordering the execution of suspected traitors on the spot. When in 79, a plot by Aulus Cicina Aelianus and Aprius Marcellus to overthrow Vespasian was uncovered, Titus invited Aelianus to dinner and ordered him to be stabbed before he had even left the room. During the Jewish wars, Titus had begun a love affair with Berenice, sister of Agrippa II. The Herodians had collaborated with the Romans during the rebellion, and Berenice herself had supported Vespasian in his campaign to become emperor. In 75, she returned to Titus and openly lived with him in the palace as his promised wife. The Romans were wary of the Eastern Queen and disapproved of their relationship.